The Matchbox Thunderbirds toy range was first launched in the early 90s to coincide with the series getting its second run on British television. Many elements of this range really set the groundwork for merchandise for the series' subsequent revivals in the 2000s, as well as the merchandise for the 2015 CGI reboot. The main Thunderbirds craft are made from die-cast metal and can be purchased separately or in this set known as the Rescue Pack. This gift set consists of Thunderbirds 1-4 to as well as Fab 1. The set has a display window as shown and the box features illustrated characters and vehicles as well as written information. The Thunderbird 1 is mainly die-cast metal. Presumably for safety reasons, the sharper elements of the model are made from a different material. The nose cone is rubber and the wings which expand as shown, as well as the fins around the base of the model, are plastic. It's just strange that they went for this blue colour for the wings however. The Thunderbird 2 set largely follows the same blueprint as the 1960s Dinky version, in that it features pop-out legs and a drop-down pod that carries the Thunderbird 4 model. Some may argue that the model's colour is too bright a green however. Regardless, it's great for many older fans to relive their childhood with an update of the original toy from the 1960s. The Thunderbird 3 has a similar material makeup to the Thunderbird 1, with a rubber nose cone. Due to the absence of any buttons or features, the Thunderbird 3 as a result is the most accurate model overall, with the colours and details spot on. The Fab 1 is built around a typical 164 scale matchbox car chassis. By looking at the car however, it seems to have been built to resemble the full size Fab 1 car replicas, built around the time of the original release of Thunderbirds Argo the movie, rather than the on screen prop which featured a much flatter canopy. Regardless, it's still a nice addition to the set and to the range. Another interesting addition to the main range is the Mole. This was released much later into the Matchbox range and separately from the main rescue pack. The model is die cast with the plastic and rubber features, however it is much bigger than the rest of the range and features a revolving drill as the wheels move along. It's an interesting addition to the range and one of the, my favourite Thunderbirds models by any company in fact. It's great when you buy a toy that has the same level of detail you'd expect from an expensive model company for a much lower price. But of course, what would the Thunderbird craft do without their home, Tracy Island? The Tracy Island playset is a condensed version of the on-screen model, with each vehicle port being brought much closer together and a small beach being featured at the front. There are moving features in the Thunderbird 1 and 2 ports, with a moving swimming pool to reveal Thunderbird 1, and moving trees and a moving ramp on the Thunderbird 2 section. The set also features sounds which can be activated by buttons on the back of the set where the Thunderbird 2 is kept. There is also the addition of a cave around the back, which presumably houses the Fab 1 model. One side of the box features an illustration of Tracy Island in the style of the playset, and the other side with a photograph of the actual playset. The other main playset in the range is the large scale Plastic Thunderbird 2. This larger plastic model has similar features to the small die cast Thunderbird 2, with its moving legs and the pod that houses Thunderbird 4. The large playset, however, features a sound chip so that voices and sound effects can be heard, and the feature of being able to fit the action figures into the cockpit area. The legs, however, are grey this time, and due to the size, they are more detailed. The Thunderbird 4 is an unusual take on the model, with yet another oversized button dominating the look of the toy. Pressing the button releases these strange spikes from the front and the headlight can move up and down as well. In order to close the cockpit the figures have to be lying down on the seats, literally as if they are lying down on the job. Had the entire model been slightly bigger this issue would have been resolved and it would have allowed the Thunderbird 4 to have a similar cockpit feature as well. Regardless it's a fun playset and it's a shame not more playsets of this range were ever made. I would have loved to have seen a Thunderbird 1 and 3 made in this same size. The action figures themselves are my personal favourite element of the whole range, with 10 to collect in total, 5 of them being the Tracy brothers and the remaining being the more minor characters, each set features a small accessory which I really love, despite some of them being slightly odd and underwhelming choices for objects for the characters to carry. I particularly love the way that Scott is given this massive huge gun as well. I don't remember a single episode any character carried anything like this, but still, I really love it. It's also interesting to note that the same accessories that come with the Scott, Virgil and Alan in this range were later reused nearly a decade on for the 12-inch figures in the 2000s. There are some interesting variations between different versions of the same figure. Virgil, most notably, has two different face sculpts and two different coloured sashes. The packaging for each figure is a simple blister pack with some nice artwork of the vehicles on the front as well as information on each character on the back. 
that's it for now. Join me next time when I look at the Stingray range from the same company.